Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I am going to be sharing all of the activities, decorations, games, prizes, and food that I made for my daughter's sixth bird day party. My daughter loves birds, and so that obviously had to be the theme for her birthday party this year. So let's go ahead and get into it. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the decorations that I did for her birthday party. I had recently gone to Dollar Tree and was looking at the wall clings that they have and I saw that they had these beautiful hummingbird wall clings so I made sure to pick up three of them so I had plenty of birds to stick on my walls. I typically like to do something in this hallway, whether it's hanging stuff from the three lights that line the hallway or doing something on the wall, and so I knew that this was going to be the perfect spot for these wall clings. We were expecting people that had never been to our house before, so I like to do something down this hall so I can just say like, follow the insert decoration here. So in this case, it was just follow the birds and you'll find the bathroom. Now, before we get too far into this video, I do want to say that these clips that you are going to see are completely out of order. So for my and your sanity, I will be showing the clips in segments pertaining to each decoration or each food item rather than showing the chronological order of the clips as they were filmed. But I do want to stress that throwing a party that involves many steps and many different decorations, often you're pausing work on one thing to go work on another thing that's time sensitive, and that's really a more normal approach to throwing a party than looking at it in this format where I cover each category one by one. Anyways, now we are going to be working on my pendant light decorations. This is an area that I do like to decorate and I use these little styrofoam rounds from the Dollar Tree and I cut out a little wedge so that it fits around the pole of my pendant light and then typically I glue on the decorations to the styrofoam little wedge. But in this case, since I wasn't sure if I would reuse these decorations, especially since they're kind of more like Easter or spring themed Themed, and I already have Easter decorations, I decided what I would do is just glue them onto recycled cardboard. And honestly, I might continue this even for permanent decorations so that I don't have to buy more styrofoam later on. The styrofoam just kind of elevates the decoration so that it's not hiding in the little wedge of my pendant light. But for this bird party, I thought I would just make some little nests. I took some of my Easter eggs that I had in my Easter tub stored in my closet and use those for decoration as well as a little bird that we will be making again later on in this video but I did make in a previous video using tissue paper, a paper plate, and a few other supplies. Another area that I typically decorate is my glass board in my dining area. Occasionally I use my Cricut to make the text or the designs extra fancy and extra nice, but since I was feeling stretched pretty thin, I thought I would just go ahead and quickly freehand Happy Bird Day Aubrey on the board and also display one of her bird paintings that she made for me one morning. Next, we're gonna be moving on to my sliding glass door. I like to use chalk pens here to usually add some type of decoration for whatever theme we're talking about. This doesn't have to be just for parties. I sometimes do it for the seasons as well. But this piece of art definitely evolved every time I looked at it. And I worked on it over the course of a few days because I just wasn't happy with how it looked. So I started by just kind of sketching out a branch of a tree. I drew a little bird from a picture I was inspired by online. And originally I was going to leave the leaves all kind of spirally, but then I took a paper towel to kind of clean up the bird and kind of dabbed the leaves and it kind of made it more realistic looking by blurring it out. And I ended up really liking that look. But one thing that bothered me as I looked at this piece of art was that the bird was kind of outlined in black, but everything else wasn't. So we will be tending to that later, but I moved on to the other side of our glass board, drew another little tree branch, and then came back on a different day because I felt like it was missing something, and drew a little nest with a baby bird and an egg. 
But again, looking at this with just the birds and egg highlighted in black, it just kind of felt wrong. So I went back and kind of just outlined everything else with a black chalk pen, and I decided I would be happy with that. It's definitely not perfect, and I'm not the best artist, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Above my sink, I typically like to hang some type of birthday banner. So this is one that I always have on hand. And I just added some little clip-on birds that Aubrey had had like stashed away in her room and spaced them out evenly across the little banner. Let's go ahead and get into the bathroom decor. I typically like to use my chalk pens on the mirror and try to do something that fits the theme here. With my daughter's frozen birthday two birthdays ago, I thought it would be funny to write, let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore, as you know, subtle bathroom humor. And so when I was thinking about this party, I just couldn't help get the phrase out of my head, like, it's a bird, it's a plane, nope, it's a bird. I don't even know what that's from, but I thought it would fit perfectly in the bathroom. And I gave it my own little twist at the end. I got these little flamingo napkins from the Dollar Tree and set them out for people to dry their hands. I know sometimes that, you know, when you go to a party with so many people, using the hand towel still feels a little weird. So these are easy disposable towels. Got this flamingo from the Dollar Tree as well. And then I even decorated our extra toilet paper rolls with flamingo napkins from the Dollar Tree. Now let's go ahead and see how I actually do this. This is so simple and really elevates the look in your bathroom, especially if you want your bathroom to fit the theme of the party that you are throwing. So you take two napkins and overlap them so that you have half of one napkin on half of the other napkin. Roll your toilet paper roll on top of the napkins so that they surround the entire circumference of the roll and then tuck in the extended parts into the hole of the toilet paper roll. Like I mentioned, this is a very subtle decoration, but I really do think that it adds a lot to the bathroom decor. And the cool thing is it can really be done for any of the seasons that come around. I'm sure there's Halloween napkins coming up. And so I, you know, plan on going to Dollar Tree to see what they have to see if I can use that in my Halloween decorate video. Moving on, we're gonna be doing some little mini balloon decorations. You will see in a little bit that I actually did not do a balloon arch for Aubrey's bird day party, and you guys will see what I did instead, but I still wanted to incorporate some type of balloon decor. So I had these little mini balloons in my balloon stash, and I thought I would just cut out some triangles of yellow construction paper some little eyeballs I just whipped up on my computer and printed out and cut out, and then drew on some feathers on these birds, and I just love how they turned out. The kids really loved them. I actually gave some away at the end of the party because the kids thought they were cute, and I hung them up above our windowsill, on our ceiling, and we will see I will also be adding them to my arch in a bit. So I know this video is a lot longer than my typical video and I'd really like to thank you guys for watching all of it. And so as a way to say thank you to the very first person to claim it, throughout my video, you will find the parts of an Amazon code that you can piece together and see if it works for you. If you are the first person to claim this code, please let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to congratulate you. I wish I could give one to every Every viewer of this video, but I don't make nearly enough money on YouTube to be able to do that. So this is just a way to, you know, express my gratitude for you as a viewer. And depending on how much YouTube picks up my videos to, you know, share with the world, hopefully I'll be able to do this more often just as a way to thank you guys for tuning in and watching my videos and for all of your positive feedback. It really means the world to me. So here is the first third of the code. Make sure you guys stay tuned throughout this video for the other two sections of the code for an Amazon gift card.
I also put up some other little decorations that I got from the Dollar Tree, a little welcome sign on my front door, as well as a huge flamingo banner near the front door in case anyone wanted to take photos with Aubrey. And then we're gonna move on to a little DIY uh, that I wanted to make for both a decoration, but I also will be using these as little prizes to give away throughout the party. I had some cookie cutters that were, you know, a variety of letters, so I thought it would be cute to spell out the word six because that was how old my daughter was turning. And I sprayed them with some cooking spray and set them on some parchment paper. Next, I added one pack of gelatin with a fourth of a cup of boiling water and mixed all of that in until the gelatin was fully dissolved. And then I added in about a whole cup's worth of bird seed. The recipe that I was following said to use anywhere from three fourths of a cup to one cup of bird seed and one cup worked perfectly for me. I filled in my cookie cutters and while the mixture was still, you know, not firmed up, I inserted a little plastic straw that I had cut in pieces to create a little hole in each letter. And I had some leftover as well, so I just put it in a silicone cake pan and made a larger bird seed feeder. Once all of these molds were prepared, I set it in my fridge to firm up, and then I came back, removed the straws from each letter, as well as the large round cake mold, and inserted each letter into a little cake pop bag and tied it off with a little twist tie. You will see me display this in a little bit, but I did want to put this in a bag so that none of the seeds would possibly fall off or make a mess somewhere else and I could easily give it away as a prize to some of our guests. But let's go ahead and move on to our treat table. I typically take my dining room table and set it against the wall of my glass board. And this is where I typically put my arches. I'm covering this table with a flamingo table cover from the Dollar Tree. Like I said, I picked up a lot of stuff from Dollar Tree during the summer because that was kind of their flamingo season. And I knew that I was going to be throwing a bird party. So I made sure to just kind of pick up as much as I could when that was a popular item at Dollar Tree. After the table cover was on, I set up my arch with a pool noodle over a third of the arch. And I actually did the same type of idea when I threw a garden party about a year or two ago. I spray painted my pool noodle brown to represent or kind of give off a tree trunk look. And we're going to be adding branches to this in just a bit. But with the exposed arch that wasn't going to be covered up by branches, I did want it to look a little bit better than just the kind of weird metal rods so i used a little ribbon and spiraled it around to give it a little bit more of an elevated look my mom was nice enough to cut some of these kind of eucalyptus looking branches uh, for me and she washed them down hosed them off got all the bugs off of them which was really great and then i had some of these small green zip ties they weren't quite large enough to just use one so i made a little square using four of them and this is how i will be attaching these branches to my arch I'm just setting the branches up and zip tying around a thicker part of the branch and just trying to fill in any of the empty space so that it gives a nice tree look. My mom lent me this cute birdhouse so I thought I would hang it right here on my little fake tree and I had to trim off some of the branches so that my lettering on my glass board was fully visible. Here I am hanging up my little bird seed feeders. I thought they looked really cute there. And then to give it more of a kid vibe, I hung some more of these little balloons on the exposed arch, almost as if these birds were kind of sitting on, you know, like a telephone line or something like that.
Let's go ahead and move on outside where I will be hanging some more of these large birds that I got from Dollar Tree. This is actually the day of the party. Uh, specifically, I do this because it gets pretty windy at my house and I didn't want them to get ruined in the wind, you know, in the days leading up to the party. I let Aubrey pick her table cover colors. So she wanted to go with like a dark blue and a light blue. And for table decorations, we're gonna be adding some little balloon weights that look like palm trees, as well as some glitter flamingos and leaves. And you can see I'm adding some other things to these tables. These are some of our activities for the party. So let's go ahead and talk about the activities and games. I like to try to have some type of craft for the kids to do at the parties in case they're bored or you know just are crafty kids who want to do something. So as I mentioned in a previous video and showed you guys, we will be making some birds using feathers, googly eyes, tissue paper, paper plates, glue, and some construction paper. And originally I thought I could just let my guests like rip off the tissue paper from the larger sheet. But after thinking about it a little bit longer, I thought it would be better if I just cut up all of the tissue paper in little squares. That way the tissue paper wasn't super bulky and all over the place. And this would be prepared for future crafts with my daughter. I also cut a bunch of little triangles to serve as the beaks for the birds. And when I constructed my bird, I decided I would use hot glue because I didn't have the extra time to deal with wet glue and you know wanting to wait until it was fully dry I just wanted to create it and make it really quick but essentially you fold your paper plate in half attach a bunch of different tissue paper pieces to one or both sides of the paper plate glue the paper plate shut with some feathers sticking out and then you add on your little beak and eyeball and it just makes a really cute bird so one of our tables outside had all of the supplies necessary for making this craft and there were actually a lot of people making these birds throughout the party so i'm really glad that i had this little station i also like to have a little sensory station and so i decided that i would use some oatmeal and put out some little sensory toys for the kids to scoop and play with the oatmeal originally i wanted to use bird seed but I thought that oatmeal would be safer if little kids put it in their mouths. And then also I know my chickens love it. So anything that was like spilled or, you know, made a mess, the chickens would just eat it up and all would be well. This ended up being a very popular station at the party. Let's go ahead and check out some of the paper activities. The first was a bird quiz. I found just some questions online and made my own little handouts. They consisted of multiple choice questions, true or false questions, and free response questions. And I only printed out like four quizzes, one pretty much for each table outside at our party. But then I went ahead and printed up a bunch of answer sheets that people could then write their answers down and I could either grade them. I think during the party we ended up self-grading. And the winner was going to get a dozen of our Homestead Fresh eggs. I typically like to have at least one game where the parents or adults can, you know, participate as well. And so this was kind of my intended adult game. Another game that adults could participate in if they really wanted to was guessing how many gummy worms were in this little jar. I made sure to tell people they can't even touch the jar. And one thing I really like about this is that these gummy worms are dual colored. So it really makes it hard to tell like how many are in the jar when you're just looking at it. I made a little title page for this game, I guess you could call it. And if I were to make one change to how we played this game, I think I would just have a sheet of paper where people like can see everyone else's guesses because that might limit, you know, how many duplicate answers were given. We ended up having a four-way tie on this game. And so I took those four people and asked them to guess again. They could, you know, choose the same number or something close because they were really just close to the correct answer, but not spot on. And then we chose our winner that way. Moving on, I thought it would be fun to guess Aubrey's favorite canary. We recently bought her this little poster from a bird store and it has a bunch of different canaries. 
my original intention was just to kind of use this as decoration for the party, but then I was like, why not make this a game? So I asked Aubrey what her favorite one was. She kind of gave me three different answers, and so I, you know, I picked one that she kind of finally settled on. And then our guests were able to guess which one was her actual favorite. For this game, and also for the gummy worms, I made some little like submission tickets and I color coded them because we had, you know, two different games with two different like answer tickets that kind of looked very similar. So I colored the canary ones blue and I highlighted the gummy worm ones pink. And I just kind of set these out near each game for people to fill out. We had two other games during our party that I didn't film, but it's worth mentioning. So you're gonna see me here make some hard-boiled eggs using a method I've shared multiple times on my channel. But the first way that we were gonna be using these hard-boiled eggs was to do a hard-boiled egg toss. Obviously, I didn't wanna use raw eggs with the little kids, and this ended up being more of a fun event for the adults to participate in. So we did a hard-boiled egg toss, and then any eggs that got cracked or ruined I just said crumble them up and throw them to the chickens they love eating hard-boiled eggs so the chickens were living their best life on the day of the party and the other little you know kind of fun entertainment way that we use these hard-boiled eggs was to do like chicken races Juan and I each grabbed a chicken we asked you know which chicken do you think will get to the hard-boiled egg yolk first and the attendees at the party got to, you know, kind of state their, their guess and then watch the chickens run after the egg yolk that we threw out in our yard. Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about the treats that I prepared for our party. I picked up two very large bags of candy at Costco. And I do this every time it's Aubrey's birthday because I anticipate we'll have leftover candy that I can therefore use for Halloween. So I sorted through the candy, set aside my gummy worms for the gummy worm game, as well as the airheads for another treat you will see in just a bit. And then I divided up the rest of the candy as equally as I could into, I wanna say about 20, 25 bags because that is how many kids we were anticipating to be at our party. Like I said, the leftover candy I set aside for Halloween and we are going to be decorating these bags to look like little chickens. So I took some red and yellow paper and created a bunch of like little red combs, like chicken combs, and a bunch of little triangles that I folded in half to give off a beak look. And then we will be using some more of the feathers and googly eyes that I got from Walmart to create our chicken. So I put some hot glue on the fold of one of my triangles and stuck it in the little crevice of the brown paper bag. And then I glued the red comb to the back side of the paper bag as well and glued on a little googly eye to the front of the bag. The feathers from Walmart were a little too long, in my opinion, for this look. I didn't really want them sticking out from the bag too much, so I cut each feather in half and then glued the two halves on the front of our paper bag. Then I did this like 24 more times. I did make five extra little goodie bags with slightly different candy, the same number, but slightly different candy, just in case we had someone come who, you know, didn't RSVP. And I identified those by kind of giving them a mirror image of this look. But let's go ahead and talk about one of the things I'm most proud of for this party prep is my freeze-dried airhead birds. 
So in addition to the airheads we got from our fruit candy from Costco, I also picked up some candy eyeballs. And we are gonna be assembling little birds using any color of airhead plus an orange little triangle as the beak. Now I was inspired by something I saw in a freeze drying group on Facebook where someone made really cute like little ninja turtles using airheads and little eyeballs. And I knew that I had to do something, you know, kind of like that for this bird party. I wanted to make it as simple as possible since I knew I was going to be creating a bunch of these and I didn't want it to be super elaborate like making a red comb and little waddles or, you know, whatever. I wanted to keep it simple. And so after thinking about it for a while, I thought the, the easiest way to get the bird image across would be to take half of an airhead, make a little square, attach on a small little triangle of the orange airhead as the beak, and then stick an eyeball on. Could I have been more detailed and more creative in the design? Yes, but it would have consumed so much more time and I was already busy as it is. I really think that this was the smartest decision, at least for me, in regards to this party. So I prepared five trays of eight little birds made from airheads and we are going to be freeze drying these using the candy setting of my freeze dryer. Now for this first run of freeze drying the airheads, I thought I would just freeze dry them using the middle three trays in my freeze dryer because sometimes the top and bottom trays don't freeze dry the same as the middle three. And if you have a freeze dryer, you can go ahead and see the settings that I did to make these. This was my first time making airheads in the freeze dryer, so I wasn't sure how they would turn out. So this was kind of my test run. I also threw on some other little candy gummy worms on the bottom tray there but I was super happy with how they came out so I knew that I could keep the same settings for my second batch of three trays. So making these in the freeze dryer took a little over three hours to complete and they puffed up really nice. The beak was fully attached to the other component of the bird. I really could have probably left the birds as is and not had to freeze dry them at all so if you don't have a freeze dryer you know you could still consider this as a treat for a bird party or you could make something that fits your theme of your party but i did want to take it to that next level using my freeze dryer While the second batch was drying in the freeze dryer, I went ahead and got started on the first batch that came out. I wanted to package up these little airhead birds in cake pop bags that I had, and I wanted to try my best to seal them so that they weren't exposed to any moisture or extra oxygen. So I used my little heat sealer to close these bags shut. Then I went ahead and used the provided zip ties to give it just a little bit more of an elevated look and I zip tied them where I use the heat source to seal the bags. And then you will see that when the second batch is all done out, cooled off and put away in these little bags, I actually took all of these birds and put them in another Ziploc bag because I just really didn't want them to get wet from the moisture in the air. And I really wanted them to stay super crunchy and fully like dried out. These were such a hit at the party. I don't think we had very many left over. I think I had to like tuck one away so that I could have one at the end of the party. And I just really love how they turned out. I think the texture is really fun too because it's just airy and crunchy, but you still get the exact same flavor of the airhead coming through. So it's just a fun experience in your mouth as well. And I'm glad that I was able to kind of share the benefits of our freeze dryer with all that came and attended the party. But I made sure that Aubrey got to experience a bird prior to the party just to kind of test out the texture and she really loved it and I'm pretty sure she ate a whole bunch during the party as well. 
So I mentioned before that one of the prizes for the adults winning any of our games was gonna be a dozen of our Homestead Fresh eggs. These are raw eggs, so I washed them and tucked them away in our refrigerator, but I love the different colors, and I ended up preparing a second dozen to give away since we have so many eggs right now. As far as kid prizes go, I did pick out some crafty bird-themed items from the Dollar Tree, as well as a little cute owl puzzle. Let's move on to talk about the rest of the food. I know that our airhead treat could have fallen under this category, but this is kind of what was put out for all to enjoy throughout the party. Something I had to start with early were these freeze-dried flamingo yogurt bites. I really love the taste of freeze-dried yogurt. I think it's fun to crunch on them, and it reminds me of these little yogurt bites I would get for Aubrey when she was a baby. But I thought I would make it fun by using this little flamingo mold that I got from Dollar Tree during the summer. Now, I had to do this many, many times, and I didn't want to bore you by filming it a bajillion times. But I filled up the molds about halfway and froze these little flamingos, put them in a container, stuck that in the freezer, and filled up the mold yet again. You do not have to be good Even the best of us have been misunderstood I made a bunch of vanilla as well as strawberry yogurt bites and then we will be sticking trays of frozen flamingos into my freeze dryer to dry out and become a crunchy, yummy, sweet treat. Its rays will wash you clean. I'm walking slowly, I'm taking my time, all I like to this ran for almost a total of 33 hours in my freeze dryer, which may have been a little excessive. Maybe I let it go a little bit too long. It could have possibly been done in a shorter amount of time, but I really didn't want the pieces of strawberry, real strawberry in the strawberry yogurt to retain any of the moisture because even just like the smallest seed can retain moisture and then it can ruin the whole batch if it sits out long enough. So I really wanted to make sure that these little flamingos were completely dried out so that on the day of the party they would still be nice and crunchy. I didn't film it, but I stored them in vacuum sealed glass mason jars until the day of the party where I then put them out in little containers with lids so that they wouldn't be exposed to moisture during the party. Let's go ahead and check out some of the other bird-themed food that I prepared for the party. We're gonna start by preparing all of the fruit that I will be using to create a little parrot platter for the party. You can see I have a lot of strawberries here and I'm actually not gonna use even close to like a fourth of them for the platter that I will be making in just a second. But at the start of the party, three o'clock, I wanted to have some like hors d'oeuvres that were decorated in a way that fit the theme and also served as decoration for the party. So I figured I would make a small little fruit platter and then whatever fruit was left over, I would then bring out when it was time to eat dinner so that it wasn't all consumed, you know, at the start of the party. So I prepped my strawberries, I cut up one or two mangoes, I also had some washed blueberries and I sliced up an apple and we're gonna be assembling this in a way that kind of gives off a parrot look. Now the plate I used probably wasn't exactly like the right size or shape, but I feel like I ended up making it work with what I had. Taking my time, all I like of talking is starting to rhyme. I'm letting go of lonely, letting go of strife. I just can't. In addition to a fruit plate, I also wanted to have a veggie plate, so I prepped my broccoli, cauliflower, and peppers the night before the party, and then the day of the party, we are going to be assembling those veggies along with some carrots and olives in a way that resembles a little owl. 
One thing that really surprised me was I learned after the party that apparently Aubrey loves raw cauliflower. So that was one thing that I was kind of surprised to discover, but happy to, you know, it's never a bad thing to discover that your kid loves vegetables. So I made sure to pick up some more when we went to the grocery store today, actually. It's also worth noting that to make the little beak of the owl, I trimmed off the sides of one baby carrot to give it more of a pointy look. And I really love the way this turned out. My mom said like the eyes with the olives just really give it that selling point of, you know, this is definitely an owl. So we had a fruit hors d'oeuvre, a veggie hors d'oeuvre, and now we're gonna go ahead and move on to a cheese meat cracker plate. I got some sharp cheddar cheese and cut that up into little squares and set aside some tiny little triangle cut pieces and I'll explain why in a bit. But I also got some Colby Jack cheese and initially I cut off the face of the cheese like a nice big thin rectangle and with the remaining cheese again I just cut up a bunch of squares. And then I took one of the squares of sharp cheddar and kind of cut out an oval and using that very large rectangular slice of Colby Jack cheese I cut out another like large oval and these ovals will be serving as the head and body of a turkey that we will be assembling. So I didn't want to be too stressed out as the party was approaching and I wanted to get this platter mostly assembled earlier on on the day of the party. So I knew I was going to refrigerate this platter and I didn't want to stick crackers in the refrigerator. So I first lined some parchment paper on my tray where I anticipated the crackers would go because they were going to be at the top of the turkey and that is why I added this little parchment paper here. But we're essentially just going to be alternating the cheeses with some hard salami until we get down to the body and head of the turkey. I also cut out a tiny little piece of salami to serve as like a little waddle or whatever for the turkey, which I have ended up putting on upside down in the final look, but it is what it is. And then closer to when people arrived at the party, I pulled out the parchment paper and inserted a bunch of different crackers for people to enjoy with the cheese and meat. I also figured I would go ahead and cut out some of the sharp cheddar to look like little feet for the turkey and stuck some toothpicks in the cheese and stuck that underneath the body of the turkey to kind of finish off the look. And you can't really see it very well, but I used a small, small piece of olive to serve as the eyes of the turkey and a broken cracker to serve as the beak. So not only did I hard boil a lot of eggs for the activities of the party, but I also hard boiled a bunch of eggs to make deviled eggs for the party and to have some hard boiled eggs out for anyone who just wanted to enjoy a plain hard boiled egg. So I didn't want to just put out basic deviled eggs. I wanted to make them fit the theme even more. You know, eggs already kind of fit the theme, but I wanted to take it up a notch. So instead of cutting the egg like in a simple fashion in half, I decided I would cut it with this kind of zigzag pattern to give a broken chicken egg look. And then I assembled the filling mixture using the yolks, some mayo, a couple squirts of mustard, and salt and pepper until it tasted the way I wanted it to. And then I went ahead and piped in the yolk mixture into each of these eggs. I've climbed the mountains in Montana, danced in the lights of New Orleans, Portland ran away with me. San Francisco stayed with me, Nashville made its way in between. Fell in love in Minnesota, and fell apart south of Salt Lake. 
Now, when I was looking for inspiration on Pinterest, I saw this really cute design where someone took two of these deviled eggs and made little baby chicks out of them. And I wasn't sure if everyone who was gonna eat a deviled egg would want really two deviled eggs. So I only made a couple of chicks for this platter and I think it ended up working out really well. I took two of these prepared deviled eggs, stuck them together so that it looked like a little chick was still inside of its egg shell. And then I ended up using some little olive pieces as well as those small triangles of sharp cheddar cheese to look like the eyes and beak of these little chicks. Now with deviled eggs, I really wasn't sure how many people would want to eat a deviled egg, so I didn't quite know how many I needed to make. This ended up being totally consumed, which was great. I probably should have made a little bit more because it was all consumed, but you know, it is what it is and I'm glad that everyone enjoyed these. Next up, we're gonna make some pink lemonade, which I am going to be labeling as flamingo lemonade to fit the theme. This was out and all of the kids loved, you know, being able to fill up their own cups. And even after the party, Aubrey was like, mommy, can we have more pink lemonade? Like, I think that I could just have this set up for her all week and she could just fill it up at her own will and life would be probably a lot easier than me having to serve the kids drinks all the time. I want reasons to stay. Moving on, we're gonna be making the ice cream cake for Aubrey's birthday. Now, if you are not new to my channel, you have probably seen that I have a whole recipe video for how to make this. But if you are just dropping by for the first time to my channel, I wanna welcome you and give you at least a glimpse at how I made this ice cream cake for my daughter's sixth birthday. Essentially, we will be cubing up an angel food cake and then scooping out a bunch of scoops of our preferred ice cream into the same bowl, and then adding in any other fun ingredients. In this case, I am adding some mini marshmallows and mixing that until everything is touching some type of ice cream. We're adding this to a lined springform pan covered in plastic wrap and then sticking this into the freezer to firm up again. And once it is totally firm, we are going to transfer it to a cake pan and then cover it with some Cool Whip or whipped frosting. My family has also used some marshmallow fluff as well. So this ice cream cake is very versatile. You can really make it however you want and it really gives a beautiful mosaic of all all of the ingredients when you slice into it. So again, if you want to see step-by-step -step in like a vlog style recipe video, you can go ahead and check out my previous video on how I make this ice cream cake. 
As you can see, I prepared two of these cakes and they look a little boring, so let's go ahead and talk about the decoration I planned on adding to the cake when it was time to decorate it. I cut up some of this almond bark and I just needed a small amount. I heated it up so that it was nice and runny and added in a bunch of sprinkles. And the idea behind this was I wanted to make a six that looked like a little bird seed feeder. Originally, I wasn't sure if I wanted to hang actual bird seed above my cake because if any of them fell I didn't want them to touch the food and so I figured a kind of chocolatey sprinkle concoction would be safer to have suspended above my cake and obviously more delicious as well. So I filled up this little silicone six with the almond bark sprinkle mixture and I added some sprinkles to the top just to kind of give it a little bit more of an elevated look. And then the final decoration of the cake was just a branch from a tree that I wrapped in saran wrap and stuck into the cake. So there's no part of the branch that's actually touching the cake, it's just wrapped in saran wrap. And then on that branch, I attached a little clip-on bird that was from Aubrey's stash. And ideally, I wanted to hang the six on one of the taller branches, but unfortunately, it broke as I was dealing with it and I got distracted during the party. And so I ended up just kind of like fixing the broken part of the six by melting the chocolate and sticking it back together. And I just made it look like it was hanging on the lower branch of this little mini tree on the cake. This was a very simple look, but I think it definitely got the point across that this was a bird party. And again, here is a slice of the cake. You definitely get the ice cream, the marshmallows, and the angel food cake all in one bite. But I didn't want to just give ice cream cake out at the party. I also wanted to make some cupcakes for the party as well, in case anyone wasn't really in the mood for ice cream. So in previous videos, not just a previous video, but in, in multiple videos, you guys have seen me work on both vanilla cupcakes as well as chocolate cupcakes. And I baked these and just threw them in my freezer and I knew that they would be good for this party. But closer to the party, I whipped up some chocolate buttercream frosting using a recipe I have shared multiple times on my channel. If you guys are afraid to make your own buttercream, I really think it's worth giving a try you can always scale it down to just see if you like the flavor you don't have to use five sticks of butter like I am you can cut everything in fifths and just use one stick of butter and a fifth of a bag of powdered sugar and just kind of give it a go like that but I have found that homemade buttercream frosting is so much easier to decorate with than store-bought frosting and it's probably healthier too in the sense that there's not like preservatives and all that stuff but anyways, once the chocolate buttercream was made, I dumped it onto multiple sheets of plastic wrap and rolled these up so that it would be easier to insert into my piping bag. And then we will be piping this frosting onto my cupcakes to resemble little mini bird nests. I used a piping tip that had just a bunch of small holes on it and I just circled around on the top of the cupcake and then I continued to pipe around the circumference of the cupcake to kind of give it the raised edge that I was looking for. And then to finish off the look, I added two yogurt covered raisins to the nests of each cupcake and I just love how these turned out. I mentioned in a previous video that had I known we were gonna be doing a bird party around Easter time at least, I would have totally picked up those Cadbury chocolate eggs that were colorful and speckled, and I think that they would have been a great addition to these cupcakes. But these yogurt covered raisins really were a good close second place choice to those Cadbury chocolate eggs.
So we are going to finish up this very long video by doing the little final touches and final setup for this party. Even though it's kind of pointless, I'm giving this rug an extra vacuum even though I did it in my pre-party clean with me. I just really love those carpet lines. And then we will be just making sure that our treat table and our island look nice for the party. I'd really like to thank you for watching this video. I hope that you guys got some inspiration if you're gonna be throwing a bird party for yourself or even if you just like watching party prep videos. I know that, at least for me, I like to watch party prep videos even though it may not be a theme that I really enjoy because I still get ideas from it and I can apply that to whatever themed party I'm gonna be throwing. So for example, if you will never throw a bird party in your life, maybe you can still take away the idea of using chalk markers on your sliding glass door or your mirrors or windows to add to the decoration for your party. Maybe you can come up with a sensory bin that kind of fits the theme of your party that little kids can play with. Or maybe you can come up with a quiz in relation to your birthday party theme that the adults can also participate with. All of these kind of general ideas I feel like can be applied to your birthday party no matter what kind of themed party you are throwing. So I really hope that my birthday party prep videos give you some type of inspiration. If you are just stumbling upon my channel for the first time, I'd like to invite you to watch all of my other party preps. I have an entire playlist that has all of the party preps that I've done so far in my many years on YouTube. And I'd also like to encourage you to stick around to check out all of my other motherhood content. This is kind of the start of my party throwing season. Uh, I pretty much have a party every other month until January, so expect more party preps to come. But I also cook and clean and do some vlogs and share some of my homesteading content on this channel, so I'd love to have you stick around. Don't forget to hit that like button and I will catch you in the next one. Woohoo! You've made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.